Hey, what's up folks? It's Christian with the Interactive Immersive HQ. I got a video today where we're gonna dive into Megalites in Unreal Engine 5.5, how to set it up, and then a really quick overview of how this could help us with our uh, workflows as creative technologists. So let's get into it. So getting started here, we're gonna go over to the Epic Games launcher and go under the library tab and we're going to first see all the different engine versions that we have. Since we're going to be doing Megalites, this is only restricted to 5.5. So make sure that you're on the correct Unreal Engine version. Um, if you need to, you just put, press this plus icon over here. And then we're met with uh, a list of all the available engine options that we have. We can click install and go through the, the installation process. But if you got it, click launch. Next, we'll get this menu over here and we want to go into games and I'm going to choose third person. Keep in mind, you can um, make it work in any of these projects, but for our purposes, we'll use this one because it comes with a couple neat things that we can make use of. All right. So once we're in our project, we want to go ahead and make sure that we have some settings enabled to make sure everything's working properly. So SM6 over here is a requirement for Nanite and Lumen, um, but it's also gonna be required for Megalites. Also hardware ray tracing needs to be ticked on as well. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that Megalites is also turned on right over here. So after we've made sure that all our settings are correct, it should be as simple as that. Megalites is activated and I can go ahead and check that by deleting all our lights in the scene, placing a point light, dragging that into our lighting folder. And if I put, if I press control shift H, it's going to give me the current frame rate in our scene currently. And I'm going to put it a little bit closer to our geo down here and just start copy and pasting a ton of lights. So I've gone ahead and made a ton of different lights in our scene and we're running at about 40 FPS. If I go ahead and click Control Shift H, I can bring up and back this FPS counter, but we can find out how much heavy megalites is doing. If we bring back up this panel under project settings and turn it off, we're, we're getting low 20s and I'm also getting an error artifact or an error message and UE is not happy with me right now. So we can already see the huge boost to frame rate that I'm getting when I have this many lights in the scene. And if I go ahead and play this and jump into our map, I can run around and we're getting on my laptop which has a 3060 in it, you know, 30 FPS with 64 lights in our scene, which is uh, a huge deal for us. So you might be saying to yourself, all right, that's pretty cool. We have uh, an ability to render a lot of lights, have some complex scenes, lots of different shadows, um, lots of different light bounces and do it pretty performantly. But at the end of the day, like how does this help us as creative technologists? And to my mind, the best application for this is for pre-visualization. Pre and one of the nice things that we're getting out of mega lights is the ability to create dynamic shadows out of textures applied to uh, rectangular lights. And supposing that we're conceiving of a new installation where we have a couple different projectors on the walls and we're putting different content on there, like we wanna figure out, okay, how does this look? And we can do that now. So um, using the same template that we had before, I'm gonna go ahead and drop down a plane and bring it over here. Rotate it, scale this bad boy up. Real big. And then I'm gonna open my content drawer, create a new folder in content, underscore mat. And we're gonna create a material for this plane. And I'm gonna call it M underscore screen. I'm gonna go and apply this over here. And this is what we're gonna be um, using as a screen, put some video content on this and supposing this is sort of like a LED wall or a projector wall. Our next step is we're going to plop down a media player. 
and it's going to ask me if I want to also create a video output or a, a media texture asset as well. Just name this screen. I've drag and dropped a couple different uh, video assets that I have and I'm going to go and double click on screen over here and I can click on each one of these and I'm going to do this one over here and it has a lot of blacks for the silhouette and then some colors on the side so we're going to get some nice shadows. I'm going to save this. I'm going to loop it as well. Save it. As out, go into my content drawer, open up screen, drop down a texture sample, all that screen, screen video here, and I can just plop this guy in here and then put him into the emissive color as well. If we want to control how bright the emiss emissive material is, we put this into a multiply node over here and then let's say bring it down to like 0.5 or maybe even like 0.3 or something like that. Save it. Click out. We need to rotate it 90 degrees and then we need to plop down a rect light right over here. Make sure it's pointing our the correct way outwards from the screen and we're going to adjust the source width and the source height and we want to also put the same screen video over here. That's the texture of the area light. And then our last step is to open the level blueprint. Drop down to the begin play. Create a new variable, call it media player. And in this drop down, Type in media player. Find this and then have an object reference. Drop it down, compile, click on this. And then we should be able to find our screen media player over here. Drag this out. We're going to drop down an open source node. and then connect event begin play and then our media source is whatever one we want i think it was the purple background that we had and this just allows that the texture to play once we play the level so if i go ahead and press play my test is running a little bit slow because i have recording going on but our texture's playing. Um, we're not getting much light because the, the scene is very well lit. So we go ahead and delete all the lighting. If we go ahead and play. You can see that we're getting some nice shadows from the video over here. It's not quite matched up. So I gone ahead and matched these up for us and we can, if we press play, we can see that the shadows casted from the screen are matching the, the shadows underneath and we're getting pretty good um, sort of realistic shadows. F1. I go and click the rec light here and I can search and this is another way for us to turn off mega lights is we can already see the huge and demonstra demonstrable difference between when we have mega lights on and when we have mega lights off. Now I've taken our single screen and just parented uh, the, the rec light to the planes and then just copied them over nine times. And so we have this full 
uh, surrounded screen pre-visualization that we have and we're playing media on every single one of them. And we're getting pretty good performance over here. I, I mean, if we go control shift H, I'm running this with recording. We're getting around high 20s. Maybe we'll dip into the 30s. But an easy way for us to, to turn on and off mega lights is if we go into a post-process volume. We have mega lights here. We enable it and then we also make it unbounded. We can check our performance by finding our post-process volume. It looks like we're getting, you know, not much. We're, we'll get a couple extra uh, bumps in frame rate, maybe two or three if we turn it on and off. But we're getting a good amount of quality difference between the non-megalites and the megalites where we're getting much softer shadows. Whereas I turn it off, we're kind of getting this hard shadow look over here. If I move around, we're, we're dipping a little bit farther down. Whereas I turn it back on. We're holding pretty steady to that kind of high, high 30 frame rate. So ultimately it seems like the most gains that we're getting with Megalites and the new, new additions of 5.5 uh, to Unreal Engine is we're getting better quality shadows when we're trying to do pre-visualizations like this. We're also getting a huge performance boost when we're getting upwards of, you know, 20, 30 lights in a scene. And um, this is a really exciting thing for us as creative technologists because it allows us to take advantage of visualizing a scene more or creating that much more high fidelity, uh, realistic environment. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next time. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.